Hello, this is Dr. Greg Hanselcheck from the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory in the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And I thought I'd take a few moments to, to talk about bovine leukosis virus or commonly what we call BLV. And uh, after a short summary, just uh, want to introduce to you all uh, some, a new strategy or a new way to help uh, help those herds that are conscientious about BLV and are wanting to prevent the spread or clean up their, their herds of this particular virus. So quick summary of, of this is, uh, as I said before, it's, it's a virus, uh, BLV is a virus, it's blood borne. These viruses live in the white blood cells. The way that uh, animals become infected is, is movement from a positive animal to a negative. And that could be through needles, tattoos, uh, palpation sleeves, uh, uh, blood on ultrasound probes. Uh, dams can pass it to their calves before birth. Uh, can also be passed in the milk and colostrum. And then horse flies, stable flies, deer flies are all thought to uh, have the ability to, to pass this virus from animal to animal. Once an animal becomes infected, which can be at any age, they have a lifelong infection. The clinical signs are, are varied. Uh, ADR, which in veterinary medicine just means ain't doing right with just these are these are individual cows that are just thinner than everybody else they're, they're low production there really isn't any any uh, obvious reason why why they present like that but uh, that's pretty common tumors this is a, a virus that produces tumors in uh, multiple multiple different organs in cattle uh, in older animals uh, sometimes the the tumor likes to to actually localize in the, in the spinal column. And therefore we have animals that, that can't get up or can't stand or can't walk very well. And then uh, the, the, this virus also causes uh, ulcers in the abomasum. So we can have, we can have black tarry looking stool. Uh, the thing about this is that it's estimated that less, less than 5% of all the infected animals ever become clinical. And so uh, even though there is a lot of BLV out there in herds, uh, it, it's not all that common to, to find the, the clinical animals. But that being said, study that looked at uh, the reasons why cold dairy and beef cows were, were condemned after they passed the pre-slaughter uh, examination and made it into the packing plant, uh, BLV or the tumors were the number one reason why uh, dairy cows and the number two reason why adult beef cows were condemned in the slaughter plants after, after they were uh, admitted and, and uh, hanging on the rail. These are some examples of the clinical signs. Again, ADR, uh, just a cow, thin cow. Wonder, there could be lots of reasons for this, but they're just thinner. There's, there's no milk production. One of the places where the tumor likes to localize is behind the eye. So uh, one eye, it, the tumor may push one eye out of the globe. So it it looks like a uh, one-sided frog eye kind of. Uh, it can present as, as tumors under the skin and then these lymphoid chains here. Uh, but again, it, it causes tumors in lots and lots of additional, different organs. Uh, here's some uh, tumors in the heart. This is a uh, tissue in the abdomen around the reproductive organs. These white uh, yellow things are all, all BLV tumors. And then the, the white spots on this kidney are also tumors. So again, can present its, its, uh, itself in multiple ways. This is a map of Kansas uh, over the last few years to show where uh, positive samples have come into our laboratory. It doesn't, it doesn't say that there's negative counties out here. We just haven't received uh, samples from there. And I, and I would say that uh, our uh, diagnosticians in, in KSBDL and, and veterinarians around the state would, would say that BLV is in every single county. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of BLV in our cow calf herds at the present time. So there's some management uh, strategies out there. And number one is what I call a must do management if we're going to control this disease, and, that, and that's prevent blood movement. So that requires changing needles, uh, changing sleeves disinfecting ultrasound probes between animals and tattoo pliers when we bags vaccinate. And then doing the best we can for uh, horse stable and, and deer fly control, uh, again, because they can, they can pass this, uh, this virus. Ticks are not considered to uh, be able to, 
to pass BLV, unlike anaplasmosis. So uh, they're not really a concern here. Strategy number two would be the must do things up at the top here, but then also test the herd and, and segregate the herd into a positive and negative herd. And the idea there is that we wanna keep them separated by pastures uh, so that we have less uh, fly movement of, of uh, the virus from positive and negatives. If uh, when herds that do that, then obviously they're gonna have to test all the negatives every year before going to pasture because some of the negatives will actually become positive through time. And then kind of a third strategy would be the must do up here and then plus or minus the, the segregation, but then a test and coal program. And uh, test and cold does work. And uh, let's say that 2% of the herd is positive, then, then culling those that 2% for slaughter only makes sense. Uh, but let's say there's 30, 40, 60% are positive in the herd, which we see a lot of that economically, it doesn't make sense to send all those cows to slaughter and start over. So uh, there's some things that can be done we talk about test and call and, and some research uh, completed up at Michigan State uh, University suggests that uh, not all the positive animals that are in the herd are putting other animals at risk of becoming infected. And in fact, with what they looked at is that and, and suggested is that only those animals with a very, very high viral load or what's called proviral load will actually uh, put the other animals at risk and then you switch that around those with low proviral pro loads probably don't put everybody else at risk and so the goal is to cull those animals with the highest level of, of virus uh, going forward and and how do we do that so uh, well it'd be it's a blood test a purple top tube and it's a PCR so we're looking for the the actual virus and your result will, will come back and look like this. So we have animal ID, we've got whether they're positive or negative, and then there's a value called a, a CT or a cycle time or cycle threshold. And the, the lower the number on the CT, the more virus there is in the animal. And so by choosing those animals with the, with the lowest number uh, here, we can, we can move those animals out of the herd because they have the the highest proviral load. And, and basically this is the way this looks, this is the way it looks. So here's your CT. So again, as CT value goes up, this column here is the concentration of the virus per ml of blood. So as the CT value goes up, the amount of virus in that animal is actually down lower. And so the goal would be to pick those with the lowest CT values because they're the ones that are most likely putting the rest of the herd at a highest risk for, for infection. And those with low pro proviral loads down here probably are not putting animals at risk and, and therefore they wouldn't necessarily need to be on the, on the coal list. So again, this is just a, a relatively new or a new philosophy or new strategy to help herds clean up BLV but not uh, call all the positive cows uh, needlessly. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk about BLV and then this new strategy. If you have any questions, please uh, email me at that email address or call KSBDL Client Care at 866-512-5650. Thank you very much.